So we've configured our network, we've connected our corporate and guest devices. Now it's time to fine-tune the RF settings of our access point. So let's go to our network policy, go under device templates, and you'll see that there's none currently there. So what we'll do is we'll create a couple of radio profiles, see what's available there, and optimize the radio profile settings to our environment. Um, but before we do that, there are some settings that have to do with Wi-Fi that are actually available on the SSIDs themselves. So if you open up, for example, the PPSK1 SSID and expand the additional settings down here, you'll see that some, of, some radio settings like which data rates are supported on this SSID are available in here. Okay. And if we open up the 5 gigahertz, for example, you'll see that we have, by default, we have 6 megabits per second as a basic data rate and all the other ones are available as well. And on 2.4, you'll see that we have 1, 2, and 5.5 disabled because these are the, some, these are the slowest data rates. Um, they also use a different modulation technique, which is called DSSS, uh, and it uses a 22 megahertz channel, unlike the OFDM, which uses a 20 megahertz channel. And switching from one to another causes um, additional disruptions on the client side, or may cause additional disruptions on the, on the client side. And we have 11 megabits per second, which is an 802.11b data rate enabled, just so we support a backward, backward compatibility with uh, legacy devices. However, in a lot of environments, this would be disabled as well. So disabling it just sets a not available setting in here. In terms of how you should set these up, so these are defaults and we've set the defaults up in a such a way that um, they would provide the most common best practice in um, most scenarios. However, if you're deploying this in a high density scenario, you actually might want to disable some of these as well and maybe go down to 20, 12 megabits per second as uh, basic and the rest optional or you may you may even want to do 24 megabits per second as basic and the rest is as optional and the basic data rates uh, mean that the devices connecting to this network need to support them but there's one more thing the basic data rate also determines what is going to be the data rate for your uh, management frames and the lowest basic data rate also tells you at which data rate the multicast traffic is going to be transmitted. So uh, it's important to differentiate between optional and basic. Okay, so let's leave this for now and let's go to common objects. And let's go to radio profiles. And there's already radio profiles pre-populated in here. We will look at two different ones. One is going to be 2 gigahertz and the other one is going to be 5 gigahertz. So let's clone the existing 2.4 gigahertz radio profile and we'll call it custom 2.4 and clone the 5 gigahertz one and call it custom 5 gigahertz. Okay, and let's open up the 2.4 one first. So in here, you'll see maximum transmit power. And by default, we've set this to 20 dBm, which really, in most common uh, settings today, this should be reduced because 20 dBm is the maximum power of the AP. And by keeping this at maximum, you're basically allowing the ACSP algorithm to transmit at uh, 100 milliwatts, which will cause CCI issues uh, on 2.4. So you really should reduce this down to something like 15. And then we have two other settings. One is transmission power flow, floor and the other, the other is transmission power max drop. And what these are is, so these are basically inputs for the ACSP algorithm of how to set up the power on, the, on these APs uh, or, or on these radio profiles. So what this does is it tells the ACSP algorithm that the maximum transmit power allowed on the APs is actually 15 dBm while the lowest power is 5 dBm. And then every time you make a change, you will make a change at maximum of 9 dBm on every go. Or actually, you will select whatever is lower, either 5 dBm or 
uh, sorry, you're going to select what's higher, either the, the 15 dBm or the maximum transmit power or the current transmit power minus the power max drop or 5 dBm, whichever is higher. And what that creates is a gradual decrease of your Wi-Fi cell. Uh, it, it doesn't cause your Wi-Fi uh, coverage to shrink from 15 dBm immediately to 5 dBm, uh, but it, it shrinks the cell gradually, uh, and that takes care of any sudden changes in your RF environment because of the ACSP power setting changes. Neighbor analysis, so what this does, basically every AP is configured to do a background scan every 10 minutes, and every 10 minutes the AP is going to go off channel for um, for each of the channels that it's uh, supposed to be uh, supporting and scan that channel for uh, quality. So in terms of interference, how they're performing, and this is also used for rogue detection. So every 10 minutes, by default, the access point will go through all of the channels while still serving all the other clients, and um, it will scan all the channels for their current uh, RF profile, and it will scan them for any uh, rogue clients or access points as well. You can skip the background scan if, for example, you have clients connected, or if you have clients in power save mode, then it's already skipped. And if you're doing voice over Wi-Fi, well, if there's a client doing a voice over Wi-Fi call, then the background scan will also be skipped because it does introduce additional delay to communication. In terms of channel selection, so this is another configuration that serves as an input to the ACSP algorithm. So here we're talking about, uh, let's switch this to Europe. So we're talking about European channel plan. We have channel three, uh, sorry, one, six, and 11. Or if you want to use a four channel plan, we have one, five, nine, and 13. And we're using 20 megahertz channel bandwidth because you really shouldn't be using anything else in the 2.4 frequency band. Another input for the ACSP algorithm is dynamic channel switching. So when do we want to implement channel changes? When, when the ACSP algorithm figures out that it needs to change to a better channel, the change can either be done immediately if the interference, if the negative impact of that channel is, is so bad that it would actually be better to just change the channel immediately, or at a scheduled interval. Um, for example, in this case, by default, we're doing this between 1 and 4 a.m. in the morning, uh, where there, won't, there probably won't be anybody using this Wi-Fi, so we can readjust the channel plan accordingly. And this will, this is, will be done based on the measurements of the previous day. Some of the other settings that we've uh, already discussed is uh, band steering, client load balancing. You have them down here. Uh, there's a setting called weak signal probe request suppression. And what this does is, it will continuously ignore requests for client connectivity for client devices that, that, are, uh, that are, would be using a very low data rate. Uh, so clients that are very far away and have a very low signal to noise ratio as perceived from the perspective of the AP. And what this does is, is protects your cell, your Wi-Fi cell um, from clients that would be using a lot of airtime. Now, this setting works together with the safety net setting, and it says if after 15 seconds that particular client that's very far away using low signal-to-noise ratio, using low data rates, is still persisting to connect, we will let it connect, just so that we don't have a support ticket because of that. But what this setting does, it will protect your uh, airtime consumption on your access point. If you have something like sticky clients or if, you're, if, you're, uh, if your clients at the edge of the cell still want to connect for whatever reason, um, to this AP. Okay, so let's save this radio profile and go to 5 gigahertz, which looks very similar. We'll also reduce the maximum transmit power in here. We will keep uni free channels enabled. What we will do though, because on 5 gigahertz we do want to have more non-overlapping channels, we will enable DFS. And what this does, this enables the UNI2 and UNI2 extended channels. So we're getting, instead of having the usual, uh, the usual UNI1 and UNI3 channels available, which don't need to support with DFS, this enables DFS channels on RIP. 
and all the rest of the settings are pretty much the same. So we'll just save. So now we have two customized profiles and we will assign these profiles to our APs and there's multiple ways of doing it. So let's go to manage first and see how you can do it on a per AP basis. You select your access point, you go to configure, interface settings and in here you can select one of the wireless interfaces and simply select the custom 2.4 and the custom 5 gigahertz radios. What happens with the um, selecting this custom 5, you'll see that we, when we enable which channels are selectable, you see you get more channels available from the drop down menu or from the exclusion menu. If you go back to the default one, which was this one, the channels disappear because the default profile doesn't have DFS enabled. So we want more channels. That's why we go back to custom 5, we expand the channel selection, we'll keep all the channels included, we, we don't want to exclude anything. And we will just save this interface settings and update the AP from here. 